I want to do a second example utilizing the vector description of rotation. The students have a lot more problems with this one and a lot of that is because it requires a lot of visualization and it also requires a student to extract information from the context of the problem to be able to get anywhere. And so I, I like this one a lot. It, it demonstrates a number of different issues and techniques in solving physics problems. So I have a long string and it's wrapped around a seven centimeter uh, diameter cylinder. Diameter cylinder. And so I have a string and it's wrapped around it. So I pull on the string at, with an acceleration of two meters per second squared. And after 1.1 meters of string is unwound, the cylinder, what is the cylinder's RPM? What is the RPM? Okay, let's, let's see what is going on here. So I have a seven centimeters diameter. Okay, so this is, uh, so here's the diameter, seven centimeters. But now I have a string that's wrapped around this cylinder and it's being pulled at an acceleration of two meters per second squared. And it's pulled until a length of string, 1.1 meters, is unwound. And I want to know what the RPM of, of, the, of the cylinder is once that happens. Well, I, I've got to, to, to look at this, try to understand what's going on here. And so, let's see. So as this unwinds, this is going to, to spin in this direction with some angular frequency omega. It's going to, if, if the string is being accelerated with some acceleration, that means uh, it's speeding up also with some angular acceleration alpha. And how are all these things related? Well, let's let's take a look. Well, f well, first of all, what do I know? I'm gonna I'm just sort of brainstorming a little bit. If this 1.1 meters was originally wrapped around this entire cylinder, let me get a, a coordinate system here. So some plus x, plus y. Uh, should I what? You know what I can do to keep, I'm going to make a positive, oh, this is a good example, I'll make a, a uh, here's my cylinder, I'm going to make my positive y down and that, and make a z into the board, uh, into the, well, into the screen, I guess, and so then the, uh, uh, this is a positive acceleration going clockwise as we see it. I can do that. Um, so after 1.1 meters is unwound, how much has the object rotated? What sort of angle has it rotated by that point? Well, I'm, I'm given from the problem that if the string is pulling and rotating the cylinder, that the string is not uh, rotate is not slipping ar around the cylinder, which means that if it if it start if if I follow this point, as the string is unwound, this point has moved around the circle an arc length of 1.1 meters. And no, that's not something that comes naturally if you haven't done a lot of these problems. So you, you might have to think about this, especially if you haven't done it before. Very powerful visualization skills. So you have to, to think about this a little minute uh, for a minute. If if I unwind 1.1 meters 
of a uh, string, the point when I, where I started unwinding will have gone around also 1.1 meters. And so you can think about it that it's this 1.1 meters of, of surface of the cylinder has come off in a straight line and so that's th that amount of arc length has come off the cylinder as it is rotated. That's the same as saying that part, that point on the cylinder has rotated around 1.1 meters of arc length. So what um, angle does that correspond to then? I can calculate that because the, uh, well, the arc length is equal to angle uh, that the system has rotated times the radius, which means that the angle then is the arc length over the radius, 1.1, and the radius, what do I know? My diameter is 7 centimeters. That tells me my radius, I'm going to go, go to meters, go, go into SI, so I don't have any problems later. So 1.1 meters, my radius is 0 0.035 meters. This only holds when my angle's in radians. So this gives me a net angle, an angular displacement, right, of 31.43 radians. So you can see this is, I'm sort of in my brainstorming session, right? In fact, I'm going back and forth between my visualization and brainstorming because the visualization step is so important here. I'm trying to understand what's going on. I've, I know that 1.1 meters is unwound and I'm trying to use that to come up with uh, what sort of angular displacement happened during that process. And so, I, and to do that I had to be able to, to figure out that this 1.1 meters unwound was related to the arc length uh, rotation of the object itself. And that only comes from being able to visualize the problem. This is one of those problems that students will, will come to me with a, with a blank page of paper and say, I don't know what equation to use. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's a recipe for failure. You, you can't uh, there is no equation that you can apply to this problem without first really understanding what's going on and being able to extract a lot of other information from the context of the problem. All right, but we've made some progress. We know that, there, that there's a net displacement of the object of um, uh, 31.43 radians. And so I think that, you know, what sort of physics can I apply to this problem? Well, I think it's undergoing constant angular acceleration. I don't know what that is yet, but I believe that's to be true. And also I think I can identify two clear points in time in which I want to apply my rotational kinematics equations. I mean, there was the point when the rotation started, and then there's the point after I've extracted 1.1 meters of string where I want to know where the RPM is. So, so I've, I've got to identify those, my two points that I've clearly identified. So let's see if I can list uh, kinematic parameters of what I know and, and not know and see if I can come up with relationships between them. Well, I, I've said my initial angle was zero. I can set where my coordinate system is. My final angle, I've, I've calculated that. That was 31.43 radians. My initial angular velocity was zero. It I started from rest. I was given that. And my final angular uh, velocity is unknown. I don't know what that is. I wasn't given that. I don't know. I'll call that omega, say. My angular acceleration is unknown. I don't know what that is. I have t sub i. I'll call that zero, my initial time, and t sub f. Uh, that's also unknown. Okay, so I, I want to find the, um, this is what I want to find. The, the angular frequency after this process takes place. But to do that, I have to find my angular acceleration. And I don't know what that is. 
But what I do know is that the string is being pulled at 2 meters per second squared, which is an acceleration. And so what does that say? How can I relate that to the angular acceleration, the rate at which the object is speeding up? And here again, I have to go to, uh, to be able to logically extract that from the problem. If I say, what does it mean to say that the string is being pulled at 2 meters per second squared? Well, it means that some uh, point on this string, and each point on the sense when the string is, is rigid, it's not being stretched, each point is being accelerated at 2 meters per second squared. And so that means the point immediately where the string is attached to the cylinder, which is being pulled uh, perpendicular to the radius of the cylinder, that point is being pulled at 2 meters per second squared. Assuming it's not slipping around the cylinder, that means that that point of the cylinder is being has an acceleration tangent to the cylinder of of 2 meters per second squared that is what we described before as the tangential acceleration of rotational motion it's the tangential component of the acceleration of an object on that point of the cylinder so given the fact that the string is not slipping we've been able to extract that the tangential acceleration of the edge of the cylinder the very edge that's where the string is attached to the cylinder is equal to the acceleration of the string which is equal to two meters per second squared and so now that I have the tangential acceleration, I know that the angular acceleration is the tangential accelerate the tangential acceleration divided by the radius. So that's two divided by point zero three five or fifty seven point one four radians per second squared. And it's positive. I haven't worried too much about signs. I can, I can go analyze that. But I know it's speeding up. I've defined a clockwise rotation here to be positive. So I know that my angular acceleration is positive because it's speeding up. So that tells me that my angular acceleration then 57.14 radians per second squared. OK, now that I have this, I know I can find my uh, angular uh, frequency. I don't have time, so I, I like to go to my kinematics equation that doesn't have time in it then, and that tells me that my final angular frequency is equal to my initial angular frequency squared, which is 0, plus 2 times my angular acceleration times my net angular displacement, and so I can solve this. So omega is equal to square root of 2, 57.14, <laughs> kind of a crummy 1 there, 31.43, and my calculator tells me that that number is about 60 radians per second. Okay, I didn't want radians per second, I wanted revolutions per minute. So that's, well, I'll just do that up here, 60 over 2 pi, then 572 RPM. My final angular frequency is 572 revolutions per minute. Okay, so what was key about this? In the end, our kinematics really wasn't that hard, it wasn't any more difficult than the sort of really simple problem that I had before. What was hard about that, how, what was hard about this, is what I was given, which was the information concerning pulling this string. 
I was pulling it at 2 meters per second squared. It unraveled 1.1 meters. And using that information to extract the fact that the arc length of the rotation th then over the total length was 1.1 meters, which gave me the total angular displacement of the rotation during that event, the, the unwrapping of 1.1 meters. Also, that the fact that pulling the string at 2 meters per second squared gave me the tangential acceleration of a point at the edge of the cylinder of the same 2 meters per second squared. That then gave me the angular acceleration which I was able to use in my kinematics equation. So again, to solve physics problems so much of the time you just can't avoid very careful uh, visualization and brainstorming uh, uh, parts of the problem-solving process. In fact, for this problem, all of the difficulty was in that stage. And once we had all that worked out, the final solution uh, really was quite easy.